Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana channel. My name is Shanks and today we are once again on the beautiful map Anorian in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06 and at the bottom right side we have the blue Gondor player Remarque. This ally is the green Mordor player Grossmaster. They are against the purple Gondor player Remus and his ally at the bottom left side is the orange Gondor player Hermine. So Gondor, Gondor against Gondor, Mordor, which is of course a better matchup for the Gondor Mordor team the later the game goes on the harder it's going to become for the Gondor and Mordor team. Soldiers are pushing forward and early on Gondor Mordor they need to kind of play a bit more defensively. What they could also potentially do and what they also did is creeping the work layer. and now they have a level 4 soldier battalion. Holy guacamole! You know that's a huge power spike because I've explained many many times the level advantage in Battle for Middle Earth 1 is just massive. Now the one level 4 soldier can actually fight against two even three Gondor soldiers by himself. But the mill has been taken down regardless. I'm assuming the Gondor players, they won't be able to deal much more damage than that. And Mordor player Grossmaster, Grossmaster has to recapture this mill ASAP. Which is also going to be his plan. The Hobbit is not going to be able to snipe it in the... Just in time. There are two, three Hobbits at the very same time though, you can see that. This one is from the Gon blue Gondor player. And the other two are from the opening team, from Hermine and also from his ally Remus, right? That's his name. Let me check. Yes. At the very same time, they are trying to deal more economical damage. But again, the level 4 soldier battalion is going to make sure that this is not going to happen. And Mordor player will be just building up more and more slaughterhouses in the, mean, in the meantime in his base. He will also be hopefully able to keep this slaughterhouse protected. And even, even if he's losing that, it's not the end of the world. Of course, it hurts you and it would be better if you don't lose it. But when you can keep those mills protected outside, with 3 mills, you will get also the discount on your buildings, which is a 20% discount. You know, meaning, long story short, you can fill up your base in literally no time. And Gondor team, now the question is, what are they going to do about that? Are they going to go for double stable and keep up the pressure? Yes, that's going to be the case. And I like that. I really do. Like having uh, lots of Gondor Knights on the field will give you just the chance to, you know, have the map control in your favor at least until the trolls from Mordor are going to join the battlefield, you know? And in this game, we might also get the chance to see three Gandalf divides eventually in the mid game. And Gandalf, you know, I have to admit, is my most favorite hero in all Battle for Middle Earth games. I will be used to reveal the Hobbit. This way, he can recapture this mill. I is able to reveal invisible units like the Hobbit, for example. And yeah, it's important, you know? You don't want to give up on your settlement anytime soon as Mordor because the amount of money you can get from those mills is just crazy amount. Smart move. They, they are actually trying to creep this work layer, troll layer rather, with orcs and soldiers all alone and they will be able to do that. Just too many units. Gondor was able to get the last hit. That's dope. And Mordor will get all the money from the creep which is going to help him. Look at the base from Mordor. That's what I'm talking about, you know? In this matchup when you're playing Mordor with a good ally like Gondor or Rohan uh, you will also get the chance to get three settlements instead of two just to help you through this early rough early game what Mordo normally has and this mill is going to be taken down but it's fine yeah i mean what i would recommend to do now at this point for the blue gonzo player is play it a bit more defensively try to keep your allies mills protected as long as you can or at least as long as he can get some trolls on the field himself so that, so he doesn't pretty much need any protection anymore there are only there is only one more creep left on the map Anorian, and that's the trolley at the bottom side. Fight between Gondor Knights. Looks like uh, this player, the blue player, will be able to win this fight and force his opponent to retreat. But heal is going to be used. It's fine. You don't want to use heal. You pretty much don't use your heal when you are fighting right here, and when your base is literally like five meters away from you. Just send them back to the well, and you can sustain. You know, decision making is very important in RTS games and sometimes one bad move can cost you the game. So Mordor is losing the mails for now, but again, oh never mind, He's look, it looks like you want to save up for a Nazgul, which is definitely a mistake in my opinion. Never mind, I'm blind, sorry for that. He was buying the middle camp, which is even a mo more mistake. Like, you have nothing to protect the middle camp, you know, that's the problem. Huh? Towers are gonna do a good job early on, but once the Gondor team will get the Night Shields, and remember, they have double stable. That means every Gondor player is now a stable. They will have like 5-6 Gondor Knights with shields. And you have nothing to protect your camp. 
So ideally, I would what I would recommend is make a troll cage, get at least one or two trolls on the field first, and then buy the middle camp, you know? You can still do that. But this way you have a better protection. The tower has been taken down. Unlike the furnaces, the slaughterhouses are quite squishy buildings, and he has now even blades on the Gondonites. That means the burst damage, you can see that yourself, they are able to burst down those slaughterhouses in literally one single second. Double bleeds, even more economical damage will be dealt. He has two mills though, untouched, which is good. And he will be needing the money he needs, you know, he takes from the mills to fill up the middle camp with more towers and more furnaces. So long story short, if Mordor can kind of keep himself protected for the next three to five minutes, he should be kind of growing rich, which is going to give him the chance to get a Nazgul, later on the Witch King. And Witch King is crucial in this matchup because this way you can provide your allies, Gondonites, with additional damage and armor leadership, so this way they can win every single skirmish against the enemy Gondonites. And also, of course, with the Witch King help, you can just keep your meals protected pretty much all game long until double, Witch King, uh, double Gandalf are going to join the battlefield from the double Gondor team. But the pressure is real. Looks like he has the Night Shields. Yes, he has the Night Shields, which is a huge armor boost against towers. And the towers all alone are not going to be able to defend you anymore. Trust me on that one. The pressure is real. This Gondor has only one. Oh, he has actually zero farms outside right now, which of course means he has absolutely no money. He's just buying the heavy armor after the Forge Bleeds. And Mordor needs to get Industry very soon. He's half a power point away from that. Industry is great when you have a middle camp like that because that's going to give you the chance to use Industry on every single furnace inside the middle camp, you know? Huge boost for the Eco. He has three mills. He's recovering. Has to definitely build some more towers. And the problemo is that he has nothing to defend himself, at least for now. But he's building the Troll Cage. Again, in the middle of the map is a mystique. I'm recommending to build those essential buildings like troll cage siege works or especially troll cage actually in your main castle until you are sure that you can keep the middle camp protected because this is what's going to happen all the time he's going to keep rushing you all the time and i'm assuming it's going to be almost impossible for you to get the troll on the field until then they can do that and fish more power points put more pressure on you and force you to reinvest all the money you get into rebuilding the stuff you will eventually lose pretty much all the time Industry is now unlocked from the spellbook. He can use it right off the bat in the middle camp. Look, now every furnace is glowing, shining bright like a diamond for a 100% you know, money boost, which means those furnaces, those five, are going to act like if they are 10. So the money, long story short, is skyrocketing now to the sky, and Mordor is going to grow rich. Gondor has now also three Gondor Knights on the field, and every single one of these should be used for defense. The Troll Cage, like I was saying, will be taken down before any of these trolls can join the battlefield. But they are keeping the middle camp protected, you know. And middle is kind of like a magnet. It's drawing the attention from the double gondor team and during all this time the Gond Mordor main base is untouched. He's desperately trying to build a troll cage in the middle camp which is again a mistake. Doesn't matter how many times you try it, it's a mistake every single time. Just build it in your main... Oh, it looks like you want to save for the, for the Nazgul now. You see how much and how fast the money is rising? It's crazy. Now the problem with the Nazgul is that the Nazguls are very vulnerable against the Faramir. So Faramir's warning arrow is dealing bonus damage to the Nazgul while it does no bonus damage to the Witch King. Of course, Witch King is more expensive than a normal Nazgul. But it's worth it, you know? You need to have leadership, you have like a more durability, more tanky hero on the field who can resist longer and fight longer without getting one shotted from the Easter line from Gandalf and the warning arrow from Faramir. This combination all alone is able to one shot a Nazgul from 100 to 0. But the Nazgul is going to be joining the battlefield soon, which of course is going to be a great defense to keep your middle protected, at least until Gandalfs are going to join the battlefield. I'm assuming this Gonzo is going to get Gandalf on the field first. Yeah, he's at 5,000. He has also the power points he needs for that. Like, he's only 1,000 away from getting Gandalf the Grey and turn him right away into the Gandalf tonight. The Nazgul is on the field. That's gonna buy some time for the Gondor Mordor team. Because until now, they've been under pressure since the beginning of the game. And this Gondor player at the bottom right side, he has the power points he needs, but 
uh, he is far away money wise he needs more than 4500 to get his kind of on field which is going to take him a lot of time since he has still zero settlements outside like literally zero because the hobbit is blocking this area as you can see he's invisible in order to reveal him he needs the model player needs to either use uh, the Eye of Sauron. What you can also do, by the way, if you don't know, is when you press G with the Nazgul on this settlement, even though the Nazgul is not able to see the Hobbit, he will be automatically targeting him. And I think that's what he's doing. Watch this now. You see? He's invisible, but he will be still able to hit him, since uh, the Nazgul is also able to scout those invisible units. Now, finally, after a long time, the Blue Gunder player is able to recapture the farm. Statues are coming up also for the orange Gondor player, Hamini. So it looks like you want to also recruit his Gandalf anytime, you know, very, very soon. Again, statues are giving you the, the hero bonus. A Gandalf, which normally costs 6,000, will cost you only 4,200. You have the first Gandalf on the field from the purple Gondor player. The Nazgul is damaged. I believe the Easter Light is going to be able to one-shot him. And, yeah, what is he doing? It's a mistake. Or it's going to be really close. I don't know. Yeah, you see? Like, all you gotta do is damage him a little bit, and the Easter Light is dealing insane amount of damage to the Nazgûls. Again, the Witch King would be much more tanky, but luckily for the model player, uh, reviving Nazgûls and even the Witch King is for free. However, it's going to cost you lots of time. And when it comes to revive a Nazgûl, revive him always from your uh, original castle and not from the camp, because you, don't, you have not the security to keep this camp under your control long enough, you know? Yes, double troll cage, but he needs the Witch King very, very soon. Without Witch King, this blue Gonzo player cannot contest and fight against the enemy horses because the enemy horses are a bit stronger. They have more horses on the field, and they will have also double gun life advantage very, very soon. How long this Gonzo player needs? Actually, he's also really, really close. But again, it's a one v two situation, so pretty much double Easter light from the double Gandalf. It's gonna force the blue Gondor player to use the heal instantly. So they have, of course, double heal, double spells from two Gandalfs at the same time. So they have more freedom, freedom to do whatever they want. What is the Gondor player doing? You cannot, you shall, you shall not <laughs> get into the range from Gandalf like that. Oh, I mean, he has heal, right? He has heal, right? He has heal. Oh my goodness, he's playing with fire. Was really close. He almost lost the Gandalf to the level seven Gondor Knights. Would be a shame. Because it would be a waste of 6,000 resources just like that. But I'm, I'm looking forward to see three Gandalfs on the field at the very same time. I, I'm, I'm excited about that. Trolls. And one more needs to be rec recruited from the Stroll Cage. Then it's going to be level 2. And that's going to give you the chance to recruit some of the Drummer Trolls. The Party Trolls, you know. Who are sporting your army with an uh, insane amount of leadership. In terms of armor, damage and also combat experience. Nazgul. Is almost halfway through. Again, it takes you a little bit longer time than reviving a normal hero. And I am this, a of the secret fire. I'm a servant of the secret fire. And there comes Gandalf the blue. So we have Gandalf the orange, Gandalf the purple, and Gandalf the blue, ladies and gentlemen. What else do you want? <laughs> Three Gandalfs in one single game. Now the pressure on the green Mordor player's piece. Uh, what you want to do in this kind of situations, target or select all your towers manually and right click on Gandalf. So everyone is going to shoot Gandalf because when your allies Gandalf is coming, he's going to use heal on his ally. Now we know that the double Gondor team has no heal because the other one just used the heal in the middle of the map and now another heal has been used on this orange Gandalf. It means the double Gondor have no heal ability available as we are talking. Hermine is actually pinging the, uh, the blue uh, the blue Gandalf from the enemy team. They want to double Gandalf lightning sword him, you know, or Easter light him. But look how many trolls we have now all of a sudden on the field. I see one, two, three, four, five trolls with one single drama troll. And what you want to do is you want to wait for the Witch King before you make a move. And he's really close for that. Like two males untouched outside, those two. Almost level two, by the way. That means they are being on the field now for a quite long time. And then the industry in the middle of the map. Uh, in the in the camp, I mean, sorry, I'm not able to speak today for whatever reason. It's gonna lead you to the 8,000 you will need to unlock the Witch King from your town center. Oh, not town center. Shanks, please. That's not Age of Empires. <laughs> Dude, I've been playing now Age of Empires the last couple of days, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, always seeing town centers left and right. With the drama troll, these trolls are not getting one-shotted anymore. But he took a lot of damage from it. It's always nice to damage those trolls when they are level 1. They have no sustain. Gandalf the Grey, Gandalf the Purple, 
uh, don't even bother using using this i mean the thing is when they are disengaging like that you don't want to use your lightning sword or easter light or beautiful visa plus because it's a whiz he can just go back to base and heal up now your easter light is going to be on a cooldown or even your e it's a waste of two spells and you couldn't achieve anything with that you couldn't even bait him to use the heal you know the pressure is real the nazgul is on the field that's going to give off give you of course a bit more safetyness since you can use the nazgul to protect your castle and your lamer mills but avoid the gandalf very important this Gandalf is kind of useless gandalf and saruman they are casters right they need to play around the cooldown so the second all your cooldowns all your abilities are on cooldown there is not much you can do anymore with these two heroes unlike aragorn for example who is also having like a insane amount of damage output with his normal auto attacks gandalf is attacking extremely slow and also yeah not being the tanky hero beautiful beautiful easter light he killed two trolls at the same time easter light has pretty much you see that <laughs> dude <laughs> gandalf the easter light man Oh, heal has been used. Did he use heal? They have heal, right? No? They have no heal. Gandalf is gonna go down. Oh, the Witch King is slaying Gandalf. Oh my goodness, that hurts. That actually hurts. Now he has to revive Gandalf, the orange Gandalf playing Hamini. It's level 6 Gandalf, by the way. Gonna cost you, of course, some time, but also a lot of money. Two and a half thousand almost. 2200, actually, to be precise. And, you know, that's the momentum. That's the chance for the Gondor Mordor team to shine. Now they gotta make a move now you have witch king you just slayed one of the gandalfs right and you have drama trolls so you have you are as strong as you potentially can become you are only missing out the darkness and you and never mind he has even darkness from the spell book like literally you are as strong as you can become just make a move i mean again he just lost four trolls you know but i wouldn't waste time i would just go ham and these towers are a joke to the scone knights when they have witch king and darkness they will take no damage from the towers you know now is the time to shine now is the time you want to make a move you don't want to give give them time to get the gandalf back on the field you know easter light has been used for one single gondor knight this gandalf is actually wasting lots of our powers you know and potential because again uh, if you are a smart player and you see the enemy gandalf using the easter light then you are in a good spot and you don't need to be worried about that anymore you know anytime soon since it's like having a long cooldown so don't chase like that look how much time they are wasting just use one of the nazgul's to chase them don't use two gander knights and one gandalf to chase one single gander knight from the orange gander player and make a move instead but they are just like trying to build a huge army worthy of mordor for no reason there is no need for that and of course the biggest power spike would be oh oh never mind the damage is splitting this Gandalf has to be careful because, again, a couple of Nazgul hits and the Easter Egg from Gandalf, which is on cooldown, can be enough, will be enough. Witch King, now, use it. He's not gonna die. It's a little bit too close, but heal is coming in clutch. He can use Wizard now. Boom! Nice! His arch is on top of the wall. But the problem here is that they are so clumped that one Nazgul can actually kill a lot of them at the very same time, you know? And again, they are just wasting time and giving time to the opening team. Which is definitely the wrong decision because this Gandalf is all about to re enter and rejoin the battlefield. So Farami is also here, which is not bad. Farami is a great hero. We have some trebuchets now for a for a siege, which is also not needed because you have trolls, and trolls are better and faster than trebuchet, you know? So with that being said, I think what Gondor should be doing instead is getting some combos on the field. With this insane amount of leadership, you get some rangers. Holy moly. Like your rangers, they're gonna kill first of all Gandalfs and later on also the eagles from the spellbook in no time. Because that's the biggest weakness of this ar army right now. They are very vulnerable against the eagles. Because they have nothing to deal with the eagles. It's like Gandalf and the Nazgûls, but Gandalf will die before he can do anything. Since eagles are dealing crazy amount of damage also to the heroes. Nearly two, three power points collected for Hermini. That's the orange Gondor player at the bottom left side. He's like... A little bit away from elven allies which is the, which is needed by the way if you want to go for the eagles you need to pick up the elves first you cannot go for the eagles after the gandalf you can only go for the cloud break what is happening here big fiesta oh gandalf has been taking down double gandalf but also the orange gondor player losing his gandalf lightning sword is going to be missed from the purple gondor player so very unfortunate for hemini 
he just pretty much lost the Gandalf, revived the Gandalf, and after Gandalf came, he lost him again. So very, very unfortunate. And going one for one is not a good trade, especially not against Mordor. By the way, this Mordor is playing very sloppy. Uh, sorry, I'm not complaining about the player's performance normally, but he's so extremely slow, you know what I'm saying? He's like not making a move until he's like full command points cap with throws. You don't need to do that, you know, you want to put pressure because pressure is going to force defense and during all this time you will be untouched yourself. Just ignore him because with this much leadership, your throws are going to be laughing about his damage output. Trust me on that one, just make a move. Just destroy the buildings already. Use the time. Easter Light is coming in clutch. No, he's going to cancel it. Which is smart, don't waste it. Elven warriors are on top of the wall. Rangers, lots of rangers inside and on top of the wall as well. Now, there is no need of rushing. He has now darkness also for a long time. He was not using it one time just yet. So, just protect those trebuchet, you know? That's all you gotta do with your trolls, just like that. And the trebuchet and your own catapults are gonna do the rest. So, play it slow now. Just make sure to place them where you can protect your trebuchet from your ally. Very important, very, very important. And don't focus too many walls. Just focus down the buildings inside the castle instead. And don't attack your own <laughs> cut throws at the same time. I mean, maybe he has too many units to micro at the same time. But there comes the reinforcement. You have also Boromir, the captain of Gonza. And look how much wasted potential there is, you know? How beautiful shot. Don't waste your time attacking like wall hubs. When there are units or heroes you can be focusing down instead. Trolls are being focused down. You just use darkness already. It's three minutes active, you know? Don't hesitate. When, it, when it's available, use it. It's a massive power spike you are missing. The second he is using darkness, this Gondor player literally can walk inside the jeans and kill all these archers which are not on top of the wall. Kill the statue as well in no time. The Witch King has to be just a little bit close to the Gondor Knights. And then they have the darkness from the Spellbook of Mordor. They have the Witch King leadership. 50% damage and armor, and they have also the Eye of Sauron, which means even more DPS and more combat experience. So long story short, those Condonites, they can become as strong as if they would have the Glorious Charge. Darkness has been finally used, but the amount of damage they took until they finally decide to make a move triggers me. <laughs> Don't do that, you know? And so focus on the arches maybe. The Nazgul is gonna get bursted down. Every unit is attacking the same target. Split them if you can. Zaplas, beautiful, into, you know, with the Elven Wood to nullify their leadership bonuses. The Nazgul is just idle, chilling. Witch King is taking a lot of damage. The Easter Light, will he go down? The answer is yes, he's gonna go down to the Archers. And look at the miscoordination. Look at the wrong and poor decision making from the Gondor and Mordor team. They are kind of too scared for no reason. They are actually hesitating a lot, you know? Double Gandalf. And by the way, the amount of time they just wasted until the Gandalf rejoined the battlefield once again is kind of sad. But even now, after messing up big time, look how much damage they were still able to deal, you know? Imagine if they would make a move and micro at the very same time, try to split your throws. Because what you want, what you don't want to do, guys, and that's my tip to you, don't attack the same target with eight throws at the same time. Because what's going to eventually happen, and it happens more often than you think, one of your throws goes down and there is like a weird animation, right? When the throws are going down, they start dancing around. They will be knocking down the other friendly nearby uh, trolls next to the dying troll. So you will be kind of handicapping yourself on the reason, you know? Don't do that. Double Gandalf. This Gandalf is level 7. This, uh, this Gandalf is almost level 8. Where is this Gandalf actually? He has to be somewhere around. Look, he's just chilling in the middle. He's only level 5. Of course, these Gandalfs are going to hit harder. More levels means more, dep more DPS, more tankiness, more health. So Gandalf is going to be, of course, overall tank here. And he lost everything. He lost both the Nazgûls plus the Witch King and all his trolls. So he was pretty much donating lots of power points to the Gondor team. Um, because of the miscoordination. Look how much, how many walls he killed before they finally make a move. You know. Again, like, sometimes you are strong enough to close your eyes and right-click on the enemy base. But this is not one of the times. Like, you need to... Play around the cooldowns. When you know enemy Gandalf is down, then you gotta make a move and coordinate your attack. Make a move before the enemy gets the units you just killed before. If this makes sense for you guys. Hopefully you understand my point. Look how, how passive they are playing. You know what I'm saying? They are just sitting in the middle and again waiting for another army for all the cooldowns to be wake up. But they, they don't realize that this also gives lots of time to the double on the team. And their Gandalfs will get stronger and stronger and stronger next to each other one of them is gonna oh be careful nice 
Actually, he was using... Oh, but the Elven allies got damage off. Very smart Elven allies, actually, from the purple Gonzo player. Just in time to split the damage from the Lightning Sword from the enemy Gonzo. And he will not get the chance to use the Easter Light. Do they have heal? Yeah, the guy has heal. And also, a Ram, a Grossmaster has heal, the purple Gonzo player. So he's kind of in a safe spot. Maybe he was trying to beat. Look at the defense. This defense is weaker than you might assume. Because the archers on top of the wall, they can get one shot from one single trebuchet or catapult shot, you know? Easy peasy. And he demolishes second troll cage, which is a mistake. Because, again, guys, very important that you understand that. If you already recruited every hero which costs you more than two, three, four thousand, right? There is no need of saving up money for anything. Like, the amount of money he has now in his bank at the bottom left side of your screen, 7,000 plus, is wasted potential, right? When you have this much resources, just build more. Like, build three troll cages and two siege works. Just make sure to invest the money. Because your money advantage doesn't matter anything. Since you already have Witch King, since you have already all the Nazgûls and you can revive them for free, there is absolutely no need of saving money for anything else. So you are not saving money, but you are wasting potential, okay? The Witch King is back on the field, chasing down the Gandalf, who is going to just turn around and use Easter Light to chunk him. More than 60% of his health is gone just like that. So basically, two Easter Lights is all it takes to kill the Witch King pretty much instantly. Now they are spamming lots of trebuchet plus catapults, which is not even needed. I gotta be honest, it's not needed. Because the Gondor team, they have not the DPS they need to kill 20 trolls at the same time. They, don't, they can't do that. Like, they don't even have the population for that. You know what I'm saying? So if you close your eyes, you have like 50 trolls, which is not 50, it's not realistic, but like 15 is realistic, you know? You get 15 trolls with 3 drama trolls, Witch King Darkness. You just send them inside, focus down the buildings one by one. If that I mean like 2 trolls are going to this building, 2 trolls to this, 2 trolls, you know? Just, you know what, you know, you get the point hopefully, right? Then they will kill the bees before the archers can kill the trolls. <laughs> because the trolls have massive leadership. In Gondor, they struggle in terms of DPS. Since they have no damage leadership, aside from the statue. And Boromir is, I believe, only level 3, yeah. So they make a move. They have also now archers on the field. One of them is even level 7, which is the right call. I like that. How close is the Gondor team for the Eagles, I mean? Not really close. I mean, and he still needs over 3 power points for that. And they are just focusing down even more walls. And... The guy here, I believe this is the... No, that's Ramos. This guy is actually one power open away from getting the Cloud Break. And Ramos, the purple Gondor player at the top left side, needs one power point only for the Eagle Summon. Again, Eagle Summon in this kind of situations isn't the greatest call. Because the archers from Gondor, they can one-shot the Eagles the second they get spawned. When they're alive, of course. So what the Gondor team needs to do is go for a risky play, but high risk, high reward. So you basically want to get into, into the melee range and visa blast them. Just before your visa blast goes off, you want to use the Elven Mood to nullify all their leadership bonuses. And you can one-shot the archers, regardless how much leadership they had before. Gandalf? Just use Gandalf. By the way, if you don't know, if you put Gandalf next to the archers and they kill, some, they kill something, the Gandalf can also hit level 10 in no time. Because there is something called, which is like sharing experience kind of thing, right? Basically, this archers now, they have... 400 person combat experience, 200 from the Drama Troll and 200 from Gandalf. That means if they kill like one unit, they're gonna hit level 10 in no time. And if Gandalf is staying close to them, they, he will share experience with them. And that means Gandalf has also 400 person combat experience, long story short. So he will be leveling up four times faster than he would normally do. Okay, so we have a Siege Warriors now. Look, the trolls are just scouting and just watching like a statue, you know what I'm saying? Just hit them, hit them once. Look, there's like one single Italian you can one-shot. Okay, this, the statue has been taken down. What are we waiting for? Lightning Sword? Nice one. Gandalf, he's gonna use the Lightning Sword, but this Gandalf is reacting fast enough to dodge. Rangers are being invisible around the trees, if you don't know that. They are stealth, just like Faramir or Elven Warriors. The pressure is real. Orcs are also on the fields now. This Gondor is making a move, but can they defend this? I don't know. Even though the coordination is so bad, but it's still the much better matchup. The combination of Mordor and Gondor is just much, much better than the combination of two Gondors, you know? Because you are limited. The only good thing about this situation is that you have two Gandalfs, and that's it. The city has been taken down for the second time. Nazgûls are just watching what's happening. 
I mean, to be fair, they can't do much about the situation. They need to kind of move on with the troll star a little bit. And also with the archers and start dealing damage. You see the damage from these archers, guys? I'm telling you. The DPS is crazy. Really close for the eagle summon. If they kill the archers and get the eagle summon, they can easily turn this fight around. And with the help of the trebuchet, he can make it, he can make it happen. Boromi is still only level 3. Pressure is real. Lightning sword. The catapults are on an open field. The power points are rising. And we gotta keep an eye on the power points from the purple Gandalf player. Because, oh, what is this Gandalf doing? Oh, no. He's running it down. He was patient, patient, patient. He's like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna run it down now. <laughs> now the Nazgul's are running it down. What am I watching right now? Don't lose the Witch King at least. That's a Cloud Break. This Gondok archers are still hitting like a truck. Gandalf has to make a move. They are hiding behind the well, which is smart. The trolls are charging in now. That means those Gondor archers have no more protection. They are actually hunting. They don't. They are like tunnel vision focusing on the enemy Gandalfs. Okay, now go for a juicy and beautiful Bizarre Blast. Boom! And archers are gone. That is just like that. Witch King, and, Witch King is so far away from the archers. The Nazgul could easily take down the Strebuchet, but he is not paying attention. They are still focusing down the walls for no reason. And now he finally chooses to focus down the Gandalf with all his units. Pressing Q and Gandalf pretty much. Gandalf will get in safety. Eagles are doing a phenomenal job. Easter Light or oh, Lightning Sword. Kill him. Oh, nice damage dealt. Does he have heal? Yes, he has heal. Look how much damage he was able to deal. Now this Gandalf can come and they can kill both the Nazgul and the Witch King with the Easter Lights, right? The Witch King has been taken down. This Nazgul is going to be taken down as well if he doesn't pay attention. Looks like he will get in safety, and once again, the double Gonda team, and I know it sounds impossible and unbelievable, but it is the truth, they will be able to defend themselves. Just because the coordination of the Gondamora team is just very questionable, you need to play a little bit more actively like that, you know? Farami has been bullied by the drummer throws, I cannot believe that. And this, this Gandalf was also very, you know, pretty much AFK, you know? I think he was automatically charging. He was like bored about what happening. The amount of slow play around this area was kind of triggering Gandalf potentially too. So basically the purple Gondor player was able to get a lot of power points from this attack. He's only six power points away from, you know, the game winning point eventually with the army of the dead. If you get, you know, as you guys know, army of the dead and the Balrog summon, they are both game winning. Balrog is of course going to be a better choice right now from Mordor and the question is how close is he and he's only 8 power points and a quarter away from getting the Balrog summon unlocked and Hamini he has also the eagle summon now the other good thing about the Gondor double Gondor is that Gondor has the best summons in the mid to late game once everything unlocked from the spellbook Gondor will have just like 4 eagles instead of 2 2, arm, two army up to that bunch of Rohirrim and bunch of elves at the same time so long story short they are the best when it comes to have additional summoned units on the field, right? And this Gondor has to make, has to stop making trebuchet already. He doesn't need that. Get some rangers on the field. And you know what you also need to do? I mean, he has no money. He's broke. You also need to, first of all, revive your guns up and make Faramir Boromir. And put them next to your rangers so they can level up to level 10 in no time. Don't underestimate that. It happened to me many, many times in a 3v3 match that I was putting my level 5 Boromir or level 5 Aragorn next to a couple of archers and he was getting up to level 10 in literally 2 seconds, you know? Then you can just win the game. And game knowledge, of course, is also very important. Maybe they don't have it. I don't recognize, for example, uh, this player. I don't know who this player is. But Hamine is a professional player. I mean, he's an expert player. And uh, also, I believe this player this player is also expert. Come, Rangers. Let us scout for Gondor. Come, players. Come, Rangers. Let us scout for Gondor. So Hamine, of course, lost quite a lot. He's also down a lot. He has almost no money. He has almost no units on the field. Besides one ranger and Gandalf, that's all he got, by the way. 30 command points, 10 for Gandalf and 20 for rangers. That's it. Luckily, his ally is saving him. Dodge the incoming damage. Don't kill your trolls now. I mean, Gandalf, of course, is fast enough to dodge. Beautiful Zaplas. How many levels does he have? He's level 8. Oh, nice. Look how he's actually killing himself. And the, like the reaction time is so sloppy. Look, he just killed again his own trolls. Because he, they didn't even cover this. Finally, they make a cover. You know, in those kind of situations, you know, it's about being faster. Covering the human wood or the elven wood the second it gets placed from your, with your own elven wood or with your, el, with your own tainted land. Very important. 
They are just trying to spawn, you know, stall the game until they have the army of the dead, I'm assuming. That's the plan of double Gondor. And to be fair, that's all they can really do. Rangers, the problem is that uh, Remus has also not much money left anymore because he keeps making more Rangers, gives them also, of course, the fire arrow, which is quite expensive. He has a well and a statue inside the base, and he has two production buildings. So he has only one, two, three, four, five, six uh, farms or six resource buildings, rather, which is, of course, uh, not enough to keep making trebuchet and also Rangers and upgrade them at the same time. So now the Witch King is back on the field, industry has been used, and let's take a look into the money from Mordor, shall we? Because Mordor's money, as you can see and tell, he's grown rich, right? He has over 15,000, nearly 20,000 resources in the bank, and this money is useless, since he's not using it. Everything that you're not using actively is useless. So he has a full base. With Orc Pit, he doesn't even produce Orcs from it. Just make more Troll Cages, Moomba Kill Pants maybe, even more... Siege Warks or Troll Cage, you know? Like, make something with your money or give all your mills, which you have also for no reason. And, uh, there, are, there is no more tree around, by the way. Give them to your ally. This way, your ally will at least have some more money, you know? Like, communication is the key to victory, guys, when it comes to player 2v2 match. And when you realize you have so much money that you can't even not spend it, you know? Then tell your ally, hey, you know what, buddy? Just take my mills. I don't need them anymore. So you get more money because we can clearly see that unlike the Mordor who has no money problems, the blue Gondor player, his ally, has big time money problems. He's indeed not even able to revive his Gandalf anymore. That's how broke he is, you know? Nazgul's. Lots of Gondor Knights, they are waiting for better weather, I believe, like for tomorrow. Uh, just more catapults coming from the Siege Warks. More trolls, more drama trolls. Because of course, slow, because he has only one of these, one Siege Warks and one Troll Cage, while he could have... At least two or three. Coming inside to kill Trebuchet. Very nice. From the blue Gondor player. Don't lose your level almost seven Gondor Knights. Oh, would hurt you. Since you have no money. We'll be able to save him for now. And he's also a one shot. You see? One shot and he killed the full battalion of Rangers. Just like that. And there is no need. Like, they are too scared from this defense. Which is not as scary as they might think, you know? If you coordinate your army correctly. Now make a move with your Nazgûl. He has been used. He just hit his own Witch King. Now just don't... Oh, Easter Lights against the Witch King, of course. Who is the main target. Gandalf is going to get in safety. Drama Trolls are not staying as close as they should. Darkness is not being used for whatever reason. Use Darkness. It's active for three full minutes. There is no reason to not use it. Eagle Summon. Boromir is still only level 3. I cannot believe that. Almost level 10 Gandalf, ladies and gentlemen. He needs to kill only one more Lumber Mill worker and that's it. Darkness finally being used. Level 10 is unlocked, boys. It means Nosta Crest time. The Eagles are flying by, but Nosta Crest. He's gonna cancel it and use it in a better way. Rolls are not receiving too much damage because they are glowing, shining bright like a diamond. And Gandalf has been taken down. Level 9 troll now. The Witch King was just observing the fight. That's why he will just get one shot from the purple Gondor player's Gandalf. That means orange Gondor player has also no more Gandalf. And not, he has also not the money to revive Gandalf anytime soon. The Eagles, they are goners. They got one shot from the, from the Rangers pretty much. As one of them is level 6. And of course they are winning this fight big time. But they lost an important leadership, which is, of course, from Witch King. Look how much damage he's taking. Do you see that? Imagine if the, the trolls wouldn't sleep or if this Nazgul would do something about that. Or if the other ranger would not attack the farm but the Gandalf instead. You know what I'm saying? So many circumstances which could be leading into a way easier game for the Gondor modded team, definitely. But it's still, you know, on the other side, those mistakes, they make the game a bit more entertaining and greater to watch and commentate. It's just me because I'm... Like, always acting like I'm playing myself. I'm still excited about this game even after so many years. <laughs> and I cannot overlook those mistakes. You know, those obvious mistakes of being just sloppy. Not a bad player, but I was about, a, about a lazy player. About a sloppy player, you know? Like, when I see these trolls doing nothing and just watching how these catapults are getting killed one by one. Or rangers are just randomly attacking the farm even though eagle summoned uh, again. And this troll's not even trying to make a move and they're eventually gonna die to all these eagles. Just makes me mad and sad and tilted. <laughs> 15 almost power points. Mordor needs only 5 more power points, by the way, for the Balrog summon. 
Look, the money from Mordor is just wasted potential. I cannot believe that. Just give all your... Look where the Lamy mill workers are need, Where they need to walk. Do you see that, boys? They need to walk all the way behind the bees to, you know, cut some trees. At least demolish your buildings and replace them with slaughterhouses. You know what I'm saying? Just like... But he doesn't care about the money. He doesn't need to pay attention about that, you know? They just tunnel vision focus on the two buildings. And then they are just waiting for the units to come. And finally, bro... Final, you make a move and build at least one more production building. That's what I was hoping for, the green mortal player, Grossmaster. Finally. Alright, so... Gandalf is back on the field, that's dope. He's level 7. This Gandalf, by the way, is also getting revived, he's level 8. But the other Gandalf is level 10. And War of Power, guess what, is almost back up because the Gundam Modded team... They give you the chance. They give you the chance to build up again and also to get all your cooldowns back up. They want to see a greater War of Power so we can have a better game to cast. Maybe. Thank you very much, Gondor Model Team. How close is he actually for the Army of the Dead? Uh, the question is really close. Like, he needs to kill like one orc and then he will be having the Army of the Dead, which is going to give you the momentum and the push power. Then you finally can make a move and not only defend yourself, but also eventually take down the entire camp in the middle of the map, which is the game winning point because Mordor is having nothing inside the beast, beside Orc Pit, which is underused or not used at all, or a bunch of slaughterhouses, uh, but he has nothing to recruit units from, you know? So if you kill the middle camp, it's GG. That's what I'm trying to say. Nice shots. 10 power points collected. Army after that is available now. Are they going to choose to use it or are they going to try to defend without? I think they should be trying to defend without that. And then you can use it for pushing instead. You know what I'm saying? And they've done so far a good job defending themselves without using big summons like Army of the Dead. I think they can do that potentially one more time. So level 8 Farame, that's what I'm talking about. They can level up in no time. He makes a move. I'm assuming he's going to use Army of the Dead. Yeah. Gandalf now is being surrounded. Make a move, Gandalf. He's going to try to kill him, but he's going to die before. Or he has been used. Gandalf is going down. I believe for the for the eight or nine time and this guy is gonna get away i believe he didn't lose him one time all game long maybe he lost him one time but it's not more than that but this kind of is mvp of this game for sure he's level 10 he has used water of power he was actually out playing the opening team big time always making it look close but at least he was kind of able to save him with heal with getting getting away making the right call Rohan I mean, and I gotta be honest, the purple Gundam play is the most focused play in this game for sure. And the amount of opportunities this Gundam Modern team had is like, I cannot believe that. Look, they are still just watching, you know, how they are getting killed from the Eagles. <laughs> just, when you are this close to the Balrog Summon, you gotta make a move too. And that's what I'm saying, that's the winning condition from the Gundam Modern team because that's what they commit on. Nazgûs are getting killed one by one from the Gandalf, from the Eagles. And yeah, Hermine, the orange Gandalf player, needs only five more for the for the army of the dead. But he's having a big trouble, you know, with the money, of course. He was just able to get his Gandalf back. You can see his money is not looking great. And the other Gandalf has now water power once again. Uh, Ramak, who is the blue Gonza player at the bottom right side was just using the Cloud Break for the second time. Cloud Break does nullify, not nullify, but it slows down the enemy units and also uh, makes them lose armor. So it's, it's it's a bit easier for you to catch them and to kill them. And when they are level 1, they will also be stunned or feared, you know, from the Cloud Break's effect. Which is kind of useless thing in BFME 1 because you get level 1 to level 2 in no time, since buying banner is not a big thing. So when you are playing against Mordor, that's what you need to do, by the way, if you don't want to be affected from the Screech. Because all you gotta do is buy banner on your units and you are good to go. 7 power points collected, but he has 0 units outside on the field. 0. Like literally 0. He lost Gandalf, he has no money. To guy Look, he has also 3 production buildings and a well for the Sustain. So he has wasted 4 of the spots. In this mills, even though they, don't, they are not needed from Mordor, he was refusing it to give to his ally. I don't know why. When I would be bored, the first thing that I would say, hey, friends, mates, hey, pal, you know, just get my meals and grow rich. I don't need that. I have 20,000 plus. Or 30,000 plus, sorry. <laughs> or the Balrogs I'm in now. But the thing is that Purple Gondor player can just buy the middle camp. Does he have money for that? Or are we going to see two Gandalfs against the Balrog? They would be even better to see, to be honest with you. Uh, let me check his money. Remus has not the money he needs for the... For the 
middle camp. But he has the money now. He has the money now. So he's just gonna buy the middle camp, which means he won't be defeated. After. Are they gonna kill Balrog? Here has been used on the Balrog. Now, but he has 5 up on cooldown. He can't use it anymore. And look, Gandalf, guys. This Gandalf, MVP of the game. It didn't only pretty much save the game for the G double Gondor team, but even at the end of the day, he was able to slay the enemy Baldrock of Morgoth, just like in the films. And of course, in the films, it was Gandalf the Grey. Imagine Gandalf the White, and that looks funny as hell. Do you see that, boys? Like, they are walking. Like, I'm, am I watching Age of Empires 4, in which they are, you know... <laughs> from the lumber camp going to harvest trees look this what is this it's like a medic medication you know what i'm saying <laughs> kind of is almost back on the field 12 almost 13 power points collected because killing balrog if you don't know giving you a huge amount of pow uh, power points and you can just invest them now into the cloud break as well that's all you can uh, you know unlock yes unlocked everything else from the spell book already so grossmaster wasn't able to finish off the bees Gondor was able to save it. And also this Gondor player doesn't have the money he needs, but he has enough to not be defeated yet. They will almost eat Gandalf. This guy has to revive his Gandalf again. I mean, Hermine lost his Gandalf quite often, unlike his ally. On the other side, uh, Hermine has almost the Eagle Summon back up, and he's only 4 power points away. And we're gonna see potentially the clash of Gandalfs, but remember this Gandalf is level 10, so he's going to be a bit more dangerous in those skirmishes. And... That's what I'm saying, like, the, the, the reason, or, or, or the, the thing is, that he was never building a troll cage inside the castle, right? And now he needs to legit, con you know, recruit four trolls first before he can recruit any of the drummer trolls. And even now, after losing the middle camp, after losing everything, and after getting even orc archers for no reason on the field, look how much money he still got. He has still over 23,000, that's what I'm saying, like, you are wasting so much money when you could share the money with your ally or build like five troll cages or five siege works and spam units all the time. And if this game is going to be lost, and of course this Gondor player didn't also play like a great game, but it's definitely the fall from Mordor player because he played extremely sloppy. Like even now you see the Gnazgus and the Witch King are just watching what's happening and he has not many units to micro. Either he's super busy while he's playing the game, maybe he's on the phone, maybe he's cooking dinner, maybe he's taking something, you know, putting something in the toilet. But uh, for sure, uh, he is not with his thoughts, with his hands, with his brain in the game. Trust me, no one. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, the moral base is falling apart, and that's gonna turn the two v two situation into a two v one situation. War of power has been used from Ganda for the second time. I cannot believe that. And Crossmaster, the sleepy mortal player, has been defeated. The other player leaves the game because he's realizing, okay, I cannot win this game anymore. And GG, what a phenomenal performance from the purple Gundam player, definitely. Gandalf level 10, killing Balrog, all this good stuff. It's always fun to watch that. And what about the mistakes of the Mordor Gundam team? That was kind of unbelievable for me. What a fiesta game, dude. <laughs> Let me know about that in the comment section down below. And sorry if I was kind of complaining a little bit too much and kind of, you know, blaming the mortal player. But it was kind of, for me, I couldn't understand. Why? What's going on? You know, I couldn't understand what is the reasoning behind those choices, which can clearly... Like, you are pretty much losing intentionally, you know, when you do such mistakes. Like, again, guys, my biggest advice, your money management is crucial when it comes to play RTS games, when it comes to win in RTS games. When you have too much resources, then you are doing something wrong. Then you have potentially very few production buildings. So the way it's working in RTS games, the more money you have, the more units you need to recruit. So that's why when you see you have like crazy amount of resource income and the money you invest into the units from one or two buildings, isn't even 10% of the money you get from the resources, then just build 10 more production buildings to always spend the money because the saved money until after your heroes are already on the field is just wasted potential. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this was enjoyable, please don't forget to leave a like on this video, subscribe for more content like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, as always, keep hitting like a track and also stay beyond standards. Peace out.